Hey everyone, it's Active Learning here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be discussing about recurrent neural networks. And specifically, we will be working with sequential data. So let's jump right into our video. So some of the types of data that we have worked with before are tabular data and image data. And tabular data are basically data organized in rows and columns, or in other words, tables. And image data are basically this image of this doc here made of tiny, tiny pixel values for these colors, right? Okay, but what if our type of input is a sequence of images, or in other words, a video? Or what if it's a piece of audio or the price of a stock over a period of time? How can we deal with those kind of data? Well, that's where we will be introducing recurrent neural networks. So let's first go over some of the applications and things we can do with recurrent neural networks. There are countless numbers of tasks that actually deals with sequential data, and they are extremely common. Recurrent neural networks basically allows us to deal with sequential data or data that are in sequences, such as that example of an audio, right? Um, some of the examples can be text to speech, image captioning, and music generation. They're all common examples of tasks requiring RNN or recurrent neural networks. So let's see how RNNs actually work, right? Um, they are actually a type of artificial neural network that are able to process sequential data, like we talked about, right? And this structure might look very grotesque and strange to you because we haven't worked with anything like this before. But how this works is that instead of a single vector of input, like we like a typical neural net, we now have multiple um, input vectors. And it depends on the size of the sequential data, right? For example, here we can have an input vector here, input vector here, and input vector all the way to T. And each of these are called a time step. And within each time step, we have the output, the hidden layer, and the input. And how recurrent neural networks work is that they're doing this by recurrent connections, which allow information to flow through the network multiple times, allowing the network to maintain a memory of the previous input, right? For example, if I'm at um, the, the first time step, I could have access to the memory of the zeroth time step, right? This makes recurrent neural networks um, very well suited for tasks that involve sequential data as they can take into um, account the context and dependencies between elements in the sequence, right? Um, you can think of recurrent neural networks as a feed-forward neural network where each layer's parameters are shared across the time step, right? The parameters are shared, okay? And feed forward basically means that the data is only in one direction, which is forward or to the right in our case, right? And we aren't actually looping backwards. We will not be looping back. And a time step is essentially a specific point in the sequential processing of the data. And it is not necessarily a standard unit of time, such as seconds or minutes, right? It's highly dependent on the type of data you're working with. Okay, now let's talk about working with sequences or sequential data. Now we need to have T feature vectors instead of a single feature vector where each feature vector lies in a time step, right? This is a time step, remember? And the feature vectors are each time step may be dependent on previous feature vectors, right? This is why we use recurrent neural networks, right? We need to capture the, um, the, the relationship between all the previous time steps. 
for example, right, um, we may have the medical pres the medical prescription of a patient might change the on the tenth day, right, and that is entirely dependent on what happened in the previous nine days, right. So that is an example of where we might apply RNNs, right? Okay. And the output for a recurrent neural network could be a single value or a sequential value, right? Or sequential output, right? And for example, if you have a sequence of stock prices and you only want to return buy or sell, that would be a single value. Now, it could be a sequence of values, such as when you want to caption what is going on in an image or video. Now, let's talk about how we can work with sequential to sequential value tasks, right? All right, so sequential to sequential task, basically sequential data is the input and the output is also sequential, sequential values in this case. So there are two types. And the first one is called align, which means the input at each time step aligns with a corresponding output, right? And an example of this will be speech recognition. And the second one is called unalign, where the input and output do not have a specific step-for-step -step correspondence. And this could be translating a piece of text, right? Right, All right, so I think that was pretty easy to understand. So each one will align with it out with, with a part of the output, right? Now let's go discuss about auto regressive models. So let's let let's do an example here. Let's say our data is the stock price of the Nasdaq 100 composite over the past uh, 30 years, right? So when it comes to statistical tools, how, how, how might we, um, yeah, let, let, let's first look at the data. How might we uh, model this data, right? So we can come up with some intuition when it comes to statistics. Um, we will focus on the stock price data from this index, right? We will look at the price. And the price of the index at a time step is don denoted by x sub t. Right, let's just say that. Now, how might we predict the time? Uh, let, yeah, let's talk about price prediction. If we only look at the historical price of the stock without considering news, financial data, and others, we are then only interested in knowing the probability distribution of the prices, right? We want to only know the probability of a certain price. So, we could train a linear regression model for estimating the conditional expectation. And these are called autoregressive models since it predicts the current value as a function of its own past values, right? Um, the term auto refers to the self-dependence of the time series, while regressive refers to the use of a regression-like model to estimate the, um, the dependency between the time steps, right? Okay, so we could try this, but there is a problem because the value of T varies depending on how long a stock has been in the market. So we're facing the problem of different number of features, right? So how might we um, fix this problem, right? How can we treat this problem? Well, there are two potential solutions and we will work with these type of solutions later on as well. Uh, they're very common, right? So the first one, since we only care about uh, what happens in the new, near future, we might limit T to a specific number, right? And that number it has to be less than T, right? Because for example, we only wanna go back five years, right? If the stock has only been around for three years, then we can't actually limit T to five years, right? So that's something to think about. Now, the number of features in our feature vectors are the same now. If we limit our T to be, uh, we limit T to a specific number that is less than T. And the second solution is that we could also have a model that maintain the summary. Uh, let's call that H at time step T 
in addition to predicting the new price. This allows us to model the new price with age, right? With our summary of the previous steps. And we can update age afterwards with a new T value, right? So these two are the solutions that we might apply. And these could apply to a lot of different problems that might encounter this problem, right? Okay. So now let's talk about sequence models. Well, what is the sequence model? Sequence model essentially allows us to estimate the joint pos probability of an entire sequence, right? Um, so for example, evaluating the likelihood of specific sentences occurring, right? Uh, when you do a Google search, it will evaluate, oh, what's likely to be typed next, right? This is using recurrent neural network. Uh, this is using sequence models, right? This will use an autoregressive model in the form of a probabilistic classifier, since we're doing classification, to output a full probability distribution over the vocabulary for what word or phrases will come next given the previous sentences, right? This is an application of autoregressive models. Now, let's talk about Markov models, right? What are Markov models? Well, Markov models follow a very strict property called the Markov property. It basically states that um, the future is independent of the past, uh, and we, only, we are only given the current state, right? We, we are training the future given the only current state. We aren't training based on the past states. Now, how does this apply to sequence models? If we only care about the t previous time steps rather than the entire sequence, then we don't need the previous states, right? We can just remove them, and that won't actually affect our predictions at all. In the case of predicting next words in a sentence, right, the dependency on previous text will only diminish as we move onwards, right? For example, if I'm predicting the next word, I, I wouldn't rely on something from two sentences ago, right? That wouldn't make that much sense. And in most modern recurrent neural networks and transformer-based models, there are rarely any t that are uh, that is greater than the thousands, right? That's typically the limit there. And um, for naming convention-wise, we usually call it the kth Markov model, right? For example, if t is one, we'll call it the first-order Markov model, right? That's an example. Now let's go over an example of applying Markov models, specifically Markov chains. Um, suppose we have a system that can be uh, in one of two states, rainy or sunny, and at each time step, the system can either stay in the same state or transition to the next state. We can uh, represent the probability of transitioning between states using a Markov chain, as shown below. Right, so. How this essentially works is that uh, if our current state is rainy, we can say that um, the likelihood of being rainy again after this current state is 0 0.7, and the likelihood of being sunny following a rainy day is 0 0.3. And same thing for sunny here. Now, what is the probability of the sequence of weathers? this sequence of weather, rainy, sunny, rainy. What, what, are, what, what is the probability of this pattern repeating, right? Well, we can use, we can calculate this probability by using Markov chains to estimate the probability of this sequence occurring by uh, multiplying the probabilities of the transitions between states that will produce this sequence. So the probability of this sequence occurring is, uh, in our case, 0 0.063, right? We're multiplying the probabilities together, right? Rainy to sunny, 0 0.3 times sunny to rainy, which is 0 0.3, and then rainy to rainy, which is 0 0.7, right? So the um, yeah, so this will give us some idea of how likely that this particular sequence of weather's weather conditions would occur. 
So this is our first series, first video in our series, so describing and analyzing recurrent neural networks in depth. And if you got this far in the video and you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. These do take a long time to make. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.